Welcome back all, this is Daz from Motorara Techniques. So in this video, we're gonna dive into DCC decoders and their varying interfaces. I'm also gonna focus on the standardization of connections endorsed by the NMRA or National Model Railroad Association and its European counterpart, the NEM or Norman Europasha Model Barn, which means standards of European model railways. I really hope I've uh, pronounced that correctly. So these interfaces play a crucial role in simplifying the installation process, ensuring a seamless integration of decoders. And as we'll discuss in this video, they've come a long way over the years. And if you're interested, that uh, the footage of the beautiful CTC machine is at the Colorado Model Railroad Museum. So I had the pleasure of being given a guided tour by Michelle Kempemer when I visited the States uh, back in September, October, 2023. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's have a little bit of a history lesson here. So in the late 80s and early 90s, the landscape of digital conversions in model railroading heavily leaned towards hardwiring your decoder into the locomotive. However, a significant transformation unfolded when an uh, Austrian brand called Roco in collaboration with Lens as a DCC decoder provider at the time unveiled the 8-pin DCC interface. Originally configured with 7 pins, this system boasted a user-friendly feature that shielded it from damage caused by incorrect insertion. The interface revolutionized conversions, demanding only connections for pickups by two, two motor pickups and a forward and reverse lights, which was three wires. This straightforward design facilitated simplified installations, leading many manufacturers to modify their locomotives to accommodate these decoders. With the growing demand of features like interior lighting and remote uncouplers, the eighth pin represented by the green wire made its entrance typically reserved for the function F1. To cater to increased customization requirements, a separate unattached purple wire became a common solution for hardwiring, signaling and significant progression in the evolution of Dakota interfaces. So let's move forward to now 2005, circa 2005, when Markland German brand launched its second generation of the Sinus type motors. ESU, Markland's digital component supplier, crafted a specialized interface for these cutting edge motors. This marked the introduction of the 21 pin decoder embraced by the NEM and the NMRA standards, but with limited adoption in the US at that point in this, at this point in time. The once popular eight pin decoder faced challenges with its restricted contacts and lengthy wires over the years. A solution emerged with the advent of direct insertion decoders, doing away with the need for attached wires. The 21 the 21 pin decoder designed to accommodate surplus pins for the Markler motors spurred the development of a new category of de decoder interfaces introducing, introduced in 2011, the Plux 22, the Plux 16, the Plux 12 and the Plux 8, which boast, boasted diverse pin configurations offering flexibility for various decoder functionalities. Cutting for the end scale enthusiasts, the next 18 interface and the compact 18 pole socket widely used in mobile technology provided an efficient solution to this. Decoders seamlessly attached to a so with this technology in mind, these decoders seamlessly attach to the interface, making it a space-saving choice for the contemporary models. Now you must be thinking, but my locomotives have only eight pin sockets or plugs, and but you want the functionality of a 21 pin socket. So in a roundabout sort of way, you are in luck here. There are two versions that I know of, and please comment below if you know of other versions um, that will fit the bill. Firstly, ESU make a harness that has male pins each end that plug directly into the eight pin plug of the locomotive and the 21 pins of the actual DCC decoder itself. As you can see, there's a bit of an issue with this one. Um, you gotta obviously have a little bit of room. Um, it's obviously got long wires that could be cut down and cut to length, but it would take a little bit of time to, to insulate them properly, but it, it can be done, but it's all. Uh, the next interface I've used these quite, a little bit over the years, which is a buck is uh, from Buckman, is my understanding. There's probably other versions out there as well, but the one I use is is a Buckman version. So this is what I'm going to call the female to female version. So female each end, and you can see it's a, a very small little circuit board. 
So this is where I see this came in handy for me. If you've got a 21 pin locomotive, but you've only got an eight pin decoder. So I've actually got some version fives and fours that I want to use, but I don't want all those functionalities sometimes, just I want something very simple and easy. So as I said, a much more uh, compact circuit, but um, bringing it down to the eight pins, you are limited without some sort of, you are limited to the one one output via, so you are limited to the one output pin via F1. I'm, I'm assuming there's some modelers out there that have uh, used these to to use a workaround to, to get all the functions that the 21 pin offers. So please comment below if, you, if you're one of those to, to enlighten me and enlighten the rest of us how you may have done that. So EOS, you also make a 21 pin to just purely the wires. So it's got no plug on the end of it. Um, now I've never personally used one of these, but we've got the, the male pin plug. So it's acting a bit like a, a, the interface. So where this would come in handy is if you, you've got an older locomotive or you want to totally rewire it for whatever reason and your locomotive and you want to use a 21 pin decoder. So just be mindful. My understanding is a lot of the older the older motors, I don't have any in my fleet anymore, do require a higher higher current. So just make sure you match the correct decode, DCC decoder with that so you don't pop your DCC decoder with um, too much current draw. This video is proudly sponsored by PCBWay.com. If you're a tinkerer, inventor, or advanced electrical engineer, PCBWay have you covered. They are passionate about PCBs, but PCBWay do not stop there. They are also into 3D printing, injection molding, and CNC machining. Check out their awesome services in the link below, and also a special offer to anyone who supports my channel. So as you can see, this is the, the ESU website. It has a myriad of uh, adapters, harnesses, anything you sort of need, as you can see on screen. I've not touched too much on the pl the pluck side of things because um, I don't. I've only. I think I've only got one locomotive that might have that, and that's one of my European locomotives. Other than that, it seems to be a lot of my my fleet have the eight and twenty one pins. So I don't think they would feature too much on Australian, US and British locomotives, hence why I haven't gone too much into it. But as you can see, you can go, I'll, I'll put the, li the link below regarding the ESU website, but uh, there's pretty well everything you need here. Obviously, I've only touched on a very few of uh, their holdings. So Soundtracks also have very similar sort of type adapters for their, their ecosystem. Now, here's one I thought we did touch briefly on the next 18. So which is a very, very slim line, small, small plug for the N scalers, uh, which I thought was quite an interesting and um, interesting piece of kit. So what I did find interesting, obviously soundtracks have um, a big UK following. So here's one of their, the, the UK Eco 21 pin NEM. That's just a basic um, standard non-sound decoder by the looks of it. So this is the, the TSU 21 pin NEM 8. So this is obviously the, uh, the 21 pin version um, this is their their sound decoder, and you can obviously choose different different versions of it depending on what you what you want to have uh, EMD diesels, GEs, Alcos, and the lot. So as you can see, the the two bigger companies I suppose out there, ESU and Soundtracks. Obviously, there are others out there. I've got no affiliation with either of these two companies. Now, just uh, purely to to show you the the different differences in obviously they do have their there's obviously the standard the NMRA standard and the NEM standard they both use both of these standards but obviously there they have their own ecosystems as well which is which is great so obviously both very very good sound decoders and just general multi-function decoders so that's the end of the video so as you can see the NMRA and the NEM have adopted sort of standardized approaches to these these interfaces like with most things which is very very important to to for our hobby these connectors I believe streamline decoder installations in compatible or DCC ready decoders um, if decoder as we've spoken of, if a decoder lacks the DCC interface or is DCC ready, it required to be hardwired or a drop-in replacement type board such as Nick's Trains, uh, Decoder Buddies, which are a great product as well. Now, as always, I have three questions. So the three questions would be this week. So number one, what sort of DCC decoder do you use? Do you use uh, ESU, Soundtracks, Digitracks or others? Uh, please comment below. And number two, have you used any of these interfaces or these harnesses before to sort of get the desired 
result that you want in your locomotives. And number three, if there's any glaring errors, please let me know and I'll endeavor to set the record straight. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, like, click that bell, little bell icon to be notified of upcoming content. As we all know, the YouTube algorithm loves the likes and the like, and hopefully we'll put other videos like mine or other videos in front of you uh, in your watch list. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.